right? So we can start creating a lot of different variations of this design. What other properties are here or parameters are useful? Like magnitude will be a good one too, a good candidate as well to a wedge. Uh, the number of frequencies, the frequency could be also right. I mean, the ratio, all of these properties or parameters are useful, you know, for you to start changing. The one that I'm going to be using on this, on this video is going to be the magnitude, frequency and seed. I mean, at least to me, they were the ones that they were giving me most of the variation that I wanted, but you can watch whatever you want, really. So let's start setting up that now. All right, so let's uh, drop a few wedge parameter because I want to, again, as I said, I want to wedge the magnitude and the frequency. And here really is up to you. I mean, I'm going to let me go back to the sphere again because it's just easier to see this. So now it's a matter of like, and let me go back to zero here just to the defaults. And then uh, it's a matter of like, okay, so how low do I want to go with the uh, magnitude here? Well, I don't want to go all the way to zero. That's kind of boring. I mean, you can go, but I mean, not for me, maybe 0.5, the lowest that I want to go and the maximum, let's say, I don't know, three. And that's looking fine too. Eh, I think we can push it more. Let's go somewhere in between. So I'm going to say, let's go from 0.5 to 2.5 on this, on the magnitude. Now copy, paste. Uh, for the frequency, let's see. Kind of like zero also, oh, it's gonna be kind of boring, but 0 0.25, it's kind of neat. Let's go to two, ooh, that looks crazy. Uh, oh, the magnitude is one, so you can see that that kind of like what it does. But if the magnitude is one, this is two, it's kind of cool. So let's go with 0.5 and let's go to with 2 here as well. So I'm going to connect this now. So I have my two wedges right here. And then for the seed, what we're going to use is going to be the wedge index. So I'm going to say wedge index. I'm going to connect this into the seed. But we need something here to change it, right? Because I want to use actually my timeline to change this. So what we can do is just drop a time node and then add this index uh, with time. So I'm going to say too long because we need to compare the frame to a long here because it's a float and this is expecting a, a long. So I'm going to connect this here and the here and that's it. Uh, you can do whatever here really. You can add, multiply, whatever you want, add more numbers, etc, etc. And really I'm just doing this. Uh, and now we have a C that is changing through the timeline. And then we have our wedge parameter here. So we are ready to go. So the only thing missing now, if I go back, is basically our wedge catch node. I'm going to do a fan in because I want to connect this here. And remember that you cannot connect this into a terminal. This needs to be uh, output into an output node. So I'm going to connect this here. And right now it's just passing through. All right, so now it's actually we're looking at this twice because we're looking at through the output as well. So I'm going to just hide that. Cool, so we are basically ready to go here. The one thing that I want to explain very quickly is that, for example, I mean, there is no really, I mean, you can do a lot more here, by the way. I just keep it simple. But for example, you could lerp, you know, something here, like a noise, for example, and then switch between and lerp between this one and a noise, for example. Uh, you could add uh, a noise, you can multiply a noise, you can play with masking, uh, and, and for example, in the displaced point, you can play with the uh, weight sport as well. And then maybe instead of like, you know, noising the whole match, you can just noise part of it. Uh, what you could also do, for example, that I did uh, in, in some of mine is like actually tag some of these faces. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna run this very quickly here, but so let's say that we pick some uh, random faces here. And let me just turn off this real quick. By default, it's gonna be actually giving you points. It's like just tagging, grouping points here randomly, and you have a probability way so you can group more points or less but i want to do faces here so i'm going to say face component and then you can do the same 
Uh, but what about, let's say that you, oh yeah, I mean, maybe I can just output this into the volume and see what happened, right? So we can just say delete faces here, for example. And I can uh, connect this here, the tag data, and then we're gonna be deleting all those faces. They are selected, and then we can just put this into the display point and see what we get, right? So if I look it through the noise and all that, and we look at the data here, what we get from the, obviously this is displaced, I'm looking at the mesh here. Uh, but if I look at here now, this is gonna match exactly what we're looking there, as you can see. So now, um we're getting something complete i mean a little bit different right but you can also play with this wave probability so let's say uh, let's push it to 0.9 for example and look at that that's completely different looking here so again you know it's just trying to think a little bit out of the box what you can do to create different design when you have an idea it's just about playing with this basically system obviously you don't want to go all the way to one because that's going to delete all the faces but you can go to 0 0.1 0 0.95 and whatever and then it's going to get something completely different so you could also add this and then just wedge you know the probability way here uh, i'm not going to do it here but i did in one of my tests and i believe that was the the sphere and the turtle if i'm not mistaken uh, but i'm going to leave it here and now we're ready to go so i'm going to save this and i'm going to touch on the post process after this so i'll send it and let me just uh actually touch right now because it's going to make sense as well so let's uh for example for me as a post process you know you want to resample oops not that one sorry resample strands because that's also going to help you uh to control the amount of points of each uh spline here I'm gonna leave it in the spatial, but I'm gonna go lower. That's too, too low quality this, so 0.05, that's looking a lot better. And then obviously, just to smooth all this, we need to uh, smooth the strands. And if I just change this to maybe 15 iterations here, now that's looking a lot better. And we can also smooth the endpoints of each strand. And then, there you go. So now you can see that this is looking a lot, lot nicer. And then, I mean, the, the, the point that I wanted to make is because now that we're gonna be catching this, you have to think about to, do I wanna actually use the wet catch here? Do I wanna use the wet catch maybe here instead, you know? Uh, so it's really thinking about what you wanna catch. I definitely don't wanna use it here because this visualization it doesn't really help me. Obviously, I can override it, but I want to have that already in the catch, right? So I want to use the point ratio to catch this. To me, this is more like a post process, and that's what I did when I show you my uh, my original uh, uh, graph, uh, because it's easy to control this after the fact instead of just baking it into the catch. So I will leave this out of the catch. You can put it inside. Uh, other thing that you have to think about is just how many seconds you want to, for example, uh, adapt here, right? Uh, how many points you want to have and all these different pos I mean, you can also obviously wedge this as well. I mean, nobody's saying no. That's why I'm saying that it's just, it's just an open question for you to think about what you want to put this. I'm going to leave it like this and now we are ready to go. So I'm going to go into uh, the flow grab engine. Uh, uh, one thing that I almost forget is actually changing this into my own scene because I want to use the project as I showed you before in the second video because I want to use that cache directory that I have in my when I set up my project right and then I also want to uh, get uh, four different uh, wedges right for these parameters and the last thing before I forget uh, that I want to go over is like so we have this and the 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 cool thing that you can do now too since this is a steel so we can actually switch this on the on the on the fly here just to check for example what wedge number three is going to give me as an output and you can see that now you can start checking even before catching this so you can say oh maybe it was too much and i say wedge number three because it says two here but remember that the wedging index start from zero just in case that's why it, and three is will be number four so if I look at this, we can start seeing and say, oh, well, maybe the, the, uh, the, this 2.5 is maybe too much, you know, in the, in the magnitude or in the frequency. So I can maybe lower it a little bit and play with this number even, at, even before catching here, right? 
However, if you try to, for example, I mean, you you know what is gonna be the first one, the last one, since this in, uh, interpolate linearly, right? So it's gonna create the first one with 0.5 and then the last one went to uh, 2.25. However, if you wanna find out the values in number two or number one, there is really at the moment no way uh, in the, I mean, that you can check right here. But the one way that you can do it, for example, is just creating a set property so you just with one and then we have the set geo property and just the difference just I'm gonna touch this on very quickly because it's, I think it's important uh, the set geo property is basically a per point uh, attribute right or property or per point or per face or per vertex right uh, and the set property is basically for the object itself for the whole object it's not per point or anything like that so for me, it doesn't make sense to have this kind of wedge value here to have it as a per point. It's just a waste. Uh, I'm gonna just use the object, uh, and then I'm gonna grab, let's say, the uh, magnitude here, and I'll connect it before the wedging. I'm gonna call it wedge uh, mag just to have a uh, the attribute. And now, if we check this, actually, you can check it right here as well. And we look at the not the per points right attributes. You want to like a, a, a check the object itself. And now we have a wedge match attribute, and it's given at one point six six seven. So that is the value on the wedge index three, right? If I go to again to three, it's going to be obvious because the uh, is that's going to be two point two five. But if I go now to uh, uh, one for example that's going to be the other value that we don't know so this is a good way uh, basically to check uh, and it's a good way basically to just save these attributes on the catch so that when for example if you open this in a in a different graph or you share this with a different uh, you can open this in a different DCC you will have this information and it's going to be useful for other people to look at it uh, and, and they can tell you if you have what was that wedge and then can you give me the magnitude so I can create something higher res or, or whatnot uh, idea for the uh, also for the frequency I'm not gonna do it here obviously for the index uh, it's not needed because we're using the the timeline here so we know this so that's another little tip and now we are ready to go so I'm gonna change this I'm gonna leave it as above you can change this as a ABC if you want to export into a different DCC but above objects gonna be more um, it's a compressed uh, format as well and faster. So I'm gonna go into the engine here, create a new job, pick the right graph. I didn't give it a name, but it's Bifrost Graph 1 here. I wanna compute all four. I'm gonna pick the large and let's do this two here. And instead of doing 15, I'm just gonna do five. So I'm gonna say five, just run five times per, uh, per wedge. And I'm gonna create, okay. And I'm gonna wait for this to pop up here and we'll be right back when these are done. Just very quickly, I forgot to change this index back to zero was in one, so that's why it didn't show up there, but now it's showing as you can see. I just wanted to don't leave you like that. So make sure that this index is at zero when you send it and now it's working. Anyway, I'll be back when this is done and then we're gonna go from there. All right, we're back. So now this is completed and I have all my wedges done and download to the computer. As you can see, so I'm gonna close this window now. And if I now connect this here too, and I'm gonna disconnect here so we can look at it through the post process that I have here going. Uh, we have the sphere and if I go through And I believe this is not, yeah, okay, so I'm gonna just go read file. Yeah, so you can see actually because I rendered just uh, five different wedges here after 06, this is not showing up. Uh, so I'm gonna just change my timeline to 105, 1005. Now this is working, and if we start changing this to the different index, right? With that now and this is actually uh, grabbing the data from before the cache so I can just go here and then grab this and again if I look at this we can see that uh, that property there right 
and we can see the the, the strands awesome so all is working you know we have now a wedge from the sphere and then you know you can do the same with other inputs for example um, so that is a graph as you can see it's really not that complicated at all it's very very simple and you get a feel uh, and remember this is a field too so you can use it for for example uh, your particle solver aerosolver uh, npm fluids you know so any any kind of any other uh, solver that actually accepts kind of uh, these fields right uh, anyhow I'm gonna hide this I'm gonna go to the original because I just just to so you can see real quick what I did so if I go into this output here basically I have also the resample the smooth and I use this point by color and if I look at this now real quick uh, let me see the oh yeah I need to unhide it <laughs> And as I was saying, I was using the point colorway property because also I can grab, for example, the point ratio attribute that I was using. And the good thing about this uh, node is that it has a few ramp presets here that I can use for easy coloring my strands uh, with this attribute, basically. And this is gonna put a point color that then I can use in my shading. Uh, this is uh, an external node uh, from our good friend, uh, Val in the discord channel uh, which is also his name is jason brown which is a, a software development for the bifrost team uh, if you don't know how to install this uh, or if you don't know where to find his uh, compounds uh, i'm gonna put the link right here so you can pause the video and grab it from here and i will highly recommend downloading his compounds are very useful for uh, to work in Bifrost. Uh, he provides very, some very high level nodes and some low levels and mid levels as well. So highly recommend this library. And then if you need to install custom compounds, I'm gonna also link up here uh, for uh, on the Bifrost help, how to install these compounds, depending on your system, it's gonna go in different folders here. However, if you are more like an advanced user, I will highly recommend using the environment variable right here. So uh, after that, I scale up my scene. Then I set up an annual strand settings, which I pick the thick uh, mode here, which is gonna render basically tubes on this and assign material. And then I use the standard surface and I'm using the set geo property reference, which basically what it does is gonna grab whatever parameter you tell it to do so. In this case, I grab the uh, base color right here and I told to use the point color attribute to override that uh, parameter, right? If you have any, like, if you have more complex networks, you wanna use the node editor or the hyper shade, and you can use the uh, all, whatever, all their Arnold utility nodes are mix and whatnot, and use it right here. And for calling the attributes, you will use the user data nodes. Uh, so in this case, I'm using the user data color because it's a vector attribute. I'm calling the same attribute point color here and I connect it to the color. And then what you do when you create your network, the only thing you have to do is just grab the last node and then drag and drop into the graph here, for example. And that is gonna create a material reference, which then you just connect here. And that basically is gonna render the same thing. And with that said, I feel like uh, that's what I wanted to talk about it. And hopefully this was helpful. Uh, let me know if you have any questions and I will see you in the next one. Cheers.